judges because you have to have at least four judges for everything. Yeah. And so um, apple pie was my day. I got apple pie. And Good afternoon, and everyone. I really like apple pie, but I didn't like it quite as well by the end of a two hour <laughs> session. I don't know how many, I don't remember. Hello, hello, everybody. We are a little bit past our start time, and we have several wonderful, wonderful uh, courses to hear about. So I have started the recording. As most of you know, this uh, recording will also be on our website, hopefully by the end of the day. So if you want to go back and look at something, you are welcome to do that. So I'd like to thank you all for attending. Um, this is going to be a great opportunity to get to see some of the courses that you're interested in. And if you don't know me, most of you do, but my name is Sherilyn Logue and I'm the director. And you'll also see Heather uh, Bristow. You'll see her photo there. And Heather is the program assistant and does an outstanding job for us. Um, don't forget, try and keep your uh, microphones muted as much as possible. Um, the instructors um, will be coming on today off and on. But first, I really want to talk about our sponsors who are very important to us and help us um, be able to provide uh, this opportunity for you. So the first person is Paige from Bethany Life. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paige Healy. I'm the director of Life Choices at Bethany Life. Um, our Life Choices program is a continuing care at home program um, to keep our members in their home for the rest of their lives. So we provide in-home care. Um, we focus a lot on wellness, independence, and asset protection um, to keep our members safe at home and aging in place. Um, so we love to sponsor these um, different Ali courses, and a lot of our members teach the courses or are involved in them. So we focus a lot on wellness, whether that's physical, social, um, intellectual, occupational wellness. So um, we love Ali, and so do our members. Um, so if you have any questions about life choices or want to learn more, we have a website with lots of information, or I'd be happy to answer questions too. And um, uh, you can reach out to me personally, but thank you all. And uh, I hope you learn about some great courses today. All right. Thanks, Paige. And how about Bailey from Green Hills? <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Bailey. I'm the marketing coordinator at Green Hills over here in Ames by the Gateway. Um, and I just wanted to welcome you all to this fall's curriculum course opener. It's so exciting to get back into Ollie and seeing all your beautiful shining faces today. Um, I just wanted to let you all know Green Hills is in the process of beginning a brand new independent living expansion over here on our Maples building. So we will be adding 20 new brand new independent living apartments um, over here to add on. And we are super excited to launch this project and wanted to let you all know if you're interested in more information, feel free to give me a call. Um, and we are excited to sponsor all of Ollie for this next curriculum and excited to see you at some of the member only lectures. Thank you. Thanks, Bailey. And next is Steve from class uh, from Clarity Asset Management. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, John. And uh, welcome everybody. Um, Steve Larson, I'm Chief Investment Officer with Clarity Asset Management. We're a fee-only fiduciary, been that way so, for a little over 40 years. Uh, the desire that we have is to promote lifelong learning, life-wide learning, and uh, not only in our own lives, in our friends, and uh, the uh, uh, Coffee is such a great way of doing that. And so it's the, uh, um, that was a little distracted by the siren going off there. Oh, go ahead and go ahead and start over, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> that's no problem. Uh, a lot of people want to shut me down early, so that's probably a good way to do it. Uh, there's, a, there's an ancient uh, text in the Hebrew Bible from the prophet Jeremiah that talks about the, the, the people of God uh, were to and it, and it says, seek the welfare of the city that you go to. So as the city prospers, you will prosper. And we've kind of taken that on as our moniker, uh, that our presence in Ames in central Iowa is to seek the welfare of the community and uh, the lives of the people that we serve. And uh, uh, 
we really uh, uh, want to focus on that. Being engaged with Ali is a great way to promote the betterment of the community through education, through relationships and sharing lives. So uh, we feel like it's a privilege uh, to be able to join with you. Thank you, Steve. And uh, representative from our newest um, sponsor, Northcrest Community is not able to be here today, but we wanna thank them and make sure you all know that they are also one of our sponsors and hope they can make the next one. So thank you so much, let's get started here. So moving forward, all the instructors have been told they have 90 seconds to give you a little spiel about their class. And the way it will work is they will unmute, we will go in order of the catalog so each instructor, when the person in front of you starts, you can unmute. But other than that, we ask that people stay muted. They are going to tell you the number of their course, the title, and of course their name, and then just a little bit about themselves. And then um, we have a few folks who couldn't be with us today. So Heather and I will be taking turns uh, reading those people who couldn't make it today. And then at the very end, um, you will have time for questions. And then don't forget the online registration begins tomorrow um, at 8.30 in the morning. So I think we are ready to start with class number one. Sam? Class number one. I'm Sam Wormley, and this is an online only course, class number one. It's titled An Illustrated Guide to Relativity. The, this is six weeks on Mondays from September 11 through October 23. And by the way, September 25th, there are no classes that day uh, for Yom Kippur, as, I, as far as I understand. Uh, the course time is from 9 to 10.30 in the morning. And our class makes use of free online and downloadable the book. The book is actually free and online and downloadable. It's titled and is Illustrated Guide to uh, Relativity by Tatsu. Takeuchi, at least that's how I pronounce his name. Furthermore, I will be able to scroll through the diagrams of the book on Zoom, and we can discuss the concepts throughout the course. It's a delightful book that uses simple space-time diagrams to visualize and teach the basic features of special relativity, and this is done so well that the material can, in principle, be learned directly from the diagrams. The handouts include links to the book, and in, an interactive space-time diagram and other resources to help you learn. We have all the tools to make this as simple as possible to explore this guide to relativity. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nancy Franz. I'm teaching course number two, which is called Exploring the Splendor of Northeast Canada and Southwest Greenland. That will take place one day only. Monday, October 30th from 9 to 1030 in the morning, and it's online only. Uh, so I love traveling. And every year I'm lucky enough, I get to travel somewhere with my mother. She's 89 and has mobility uh, challenges. And so we like to choose new travel geography. Last year, our new travel geography was Northeast Canada and Greenland, because we were wondering how in the world we would ever get to the world's largest island. And we found a cruise ship that would take us there. Uh, behind me, you see a picture of the bay, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, and the trail that I hiked from kind of where I'm standing right now all the way back to the cruise ship. Uh, that will be one of the pieces I will share, as well as about the culture of the places we went, the natural history, and a little bit of my observations, maybe tips, um, shortcuts, some things about that kind of travel. So I hope that you will join me, and I do promise an iceberg or two in the photos. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Karen Kodrowski and I'm teaching course number three. I am the director of the Carrie Chapman Cat Center and the course that I am teaching is the Equal Rights Amendment at 100. It's a two day or two session course starting on September 11th. And the first section is going to focus on the 100 year history of the Equal Rights Amendment from its first introduction in 1923 
until the most recent efforts to add it to the Constitution in 2023. Uh, and we will also talk about why I tend to refer to the ERA as the zombie amendment, because it's neither alive nor dead. Um, the second session will focus on the ERA in Iowa, both the ratification debate of the, the National um, Equal Rights Amendment, the rescission effort that occurred in Iowa in the late 1970s, and then the three efforts to add the Equal Rights Amendment to the state constitution. This effort was finally successful in 1998, making Iowa one of 26 states, three territories in the District of Columbia that have an Equal Rights Amendment in their foundational documents. I'm Peter Halleck. I'm teaching uh, course number four. Ames First Schools. Uh, it's a one week course. Uh, the settlement of this area of Sto Story County happened in the late 1850s. Uh, the first school here was Hoggett School in 1862. It was a one room school along the road between Nevada and the proposed agricultural college. And then two years later, about a mile east of that, the village of Ames was laid out. By 1868, there were too many students for the one-room Hoggett School, and the uh, township school district uh, built a new school on the south side of Ames. And then Two years later, in 1870, when Ames Independent School District was formed, that school on the south side of Ames was already overcrowded, and they started renting space downtown for overflow. And by 1875, they had built a new school at 8th and States, or at uh, Kellogg and State Street, which is now 8th Street. Uh, which became known as North School and the first school on the South Side became known as South School. But both of those ended up being overcrowded. North School was the first high school for Ames. Uh, and by 1882, they, those were both overcrowded and they built Central on the uh, west side of downtown. Uh, we will talk about all th of those and the effort to move all the primary students out of Central so that it could be concentrated as a high school and junior high. Uh, so I hope you'll join me. Uh, the first, the class is on Monday, October 2nd. Now I'll switch over to number five, which is the shaping of Ames, the legacy of John Stevens. Uh, John Stevens came to Ames as part of the first class at the Agricultural College. Most people probably, if, to the extent they've heard of him at all, heard of a, him being a district attorney and then a judge. Uh, might also have heard that he ran for governor on Teddy Roosevelt's progressive party ticket, but John Stevens had a tremendous impact on the city of Ames. Uh, he organized the telephone company and brought commercial telephone service to Ames in 1882. In 1890, after the first opera house burned down, taking a third of the downtown with it, uh, he built a the second opera house, and he built it at the base of the new water tower downtown. Uh, then in 1891, he organized the Ames and College Railway Company, which operated the Dinky. He formed the Town Lot Syndicate, which uh, laid out College Park Edition, as well as about seven other editions that moved the city of Ames toward the college. In 18, 
1999-1900, he negotiated a four-way deal to provide direct road service between Ames and the college with no railroad crossings, but that didn't go anywhere because President Beardshire died and the college backed out of it. Uh, in 1901, he offered a five acre site for the library, which got turned down by the city. In 1902, he proposed central heating plant for the city of Ames to get rid of the hazards of coal, uh, both fire hazards and health hazards. Then in 1907, he built the interurban connections that uh, hooked Ames in with Boone, Fort Dodge, Des Moines. Uh, and the last one I have listed is in 1912, he donated land on both sides of Squaw Creek north of 6th Street to be a new city park. There's so much more that we'll talk about. I hope you'll join me. It is two weeks, October 9th and 16th at 11 a.m. I'm Ning Jia. I will offer course number six, The Mongol Empire in World History and the Mongols Today. The course will meet on Mondays, September 11th and September 18th from 1 to 2.30 Central Time online. I believe we all know the name of the great Mongol Khan, Genghis Khan, who lived during 1162 to 1227. He and his four sons established the largest empire in world history. That empire had four parts beyond their homeland, Mongolia. They were China, Central Asia, Russia, and the Middle East. In the first course meeting, we will go over the historical process of the four parts and answer the question, where were the Mongols after each part collapsed? The second course meeting will introduce the Mongol life today in Mongolia. I will show the photos of my trips there and tell all about the Mongol people in the 21st century. They are tent housing, nomadic economy, relationship with their horses and livestock, women, family, education, Buddhist temples, horse head violin performance, and uh, throat singing, and uh, many other interesting topics. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Ochter, and I'm offering course seven. Uh, the Truth Behind the War in Vietnam. It's an online course offered for three weeks, Monday, October 2nd through Monday, October 16th, from 1 until 2.30, 1 until 2.30. In the course, we're going to examine the role that we played, the United States played, in the Vietnam conflict from 1945 to 1975. We're going to analyze the strategic and diplomatic decisions of each president during that period. We'll look at what was the truth and what wasn't the truth through the eyes of the soldiers that were in the field and the reporters who were in the field, along with what was the thinking of the military leaders and the presidents in Washington. We'll attempt to answer the following questions. Should we, the United States, have gotten into Vietnam? Did we understand the type of war we were getting into? Did the common people of South Vietnam uh, want us helping them in the conflict with North Vietnam, their conflict with North Vietnam? Uh, were the military reports from Vietnam always accurate? What got us deeper and deeper in the war? Was there a point when we should have gotten out of the conflicts? Did our presidents and cabinet members really understand what was happening in Vietnam? I understand that this can be and is a very emotional topic for many of us who lived through the war. Many of us have, have uh, either served in the war or had family members or friends that served in the war and uh, lost loved ones and friends. 
my goal is to give the story of Vietnam and our participation in that conflict through research and through the books that have been written since that conflict. Uh, I hope you consider taking the course. Thank you. Okay, just to let you all know that class number eight has been moved to the winter session. So we'll move on to class number nine. I'm Ning Jia. I will offer course number nine. Treasure your family photos, but how? The course will meet on Mondays, September 11th and September 18th from 3 to 4.30 Central Time online. In the first course meeting, I will address those questions. Do you have a historical photo of your extended family either taken before you were born or when you were a child or at any time in your life? How much do your children and grandchildren know about the life stories of those in the photo and how much you wish them to know? Have you ever thought that your family heritage and life stories can have a social value? I will show examples and tell my own experiences. Our second course meeting is an engaging class. On the voluntary basis, we share ideas about developing projects for family photos. In my past spring teaching of this course, I found amazing works done by the class participants, either in artistic form or in written form. It shows me the talent and creativity from our class participants. We all should realize that we can do things with creativity, worth to give it a try. The course does not require anyone to finish a project, but will give ideas for what you can do later when you have time. Hope to meet you in the course. Thank you. Thanks for having me, everyone. I'm a big fan of Ali and the ISU Alumni Association, so I'm super happy to be back as a presenter. Uh, my name is Nikki Port. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns, and I'm presenting course 10 called GSD 101, Build Your Knowledge About the LGBT Plus Community. It's going to take place online on Monday, October 2nd from 3 to 4.30. So this presentation is a combination of two of my past OLLI programs, and we've extended the time to allow for more conversation and questions. So if you've been a part of uh, the, the past two presentations I've done, it'll be the same, the same content. It's meant for people who are already motivated to learn about gender, sexuality, and how to be a good ally for the LGBTQ plus community. So if you aren't already motivated, this won't be a session that will focus on that. Um, what we will focus on in our time together on October 2nd is the following. So ways that people understand gender and sexuality, both past and present, um, and the evolution of that. Language and terminology when referring to the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we'll talk about sex and gender and distinctions between the two concepts and, and the different components within. Uh, we'll also talk about pronouns, what they are, why the, why the respectful use of pronouns is important and understanding pronouns that are new to you. Uh, and then we'll, we'll sprinkle in um, some ideas on allyship, what it is, strategies for developing your allyship, when, how, and when to take action as an ally. And then you'll, you'll leave the session with a few helpful resources for continuing your learning about gender and sexual diversity. Um, so we're building in time. So the time to spare will be spent talking about any topics around gender and sexual diversity that participants bring to the session. So come with your thoughts to add to the discussion of the importance of supporting the LGBTQ plus community. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Joseph, who is going to be teaching class number 11 from Management to Murder, My Journey to Becoming a Novelist, is not able to join us today. That is a one session on Monday, September the 11th, and it is a 5.30 to 7 o'clock class and is all online. Hi, I'm Deb Brown, co-founder of Savior.Town. I will be leading course number 12, Cheap Downtown Placemaking Ideas. 
It is Monday, October 9th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. online. So why do the Cheap Ideas work? Well, first of all, it provides the opportunity for anyone to be involved. It is certainly not committee driven, it's community driven. And these ideas don't require year long committee assignments. They are often done in less than a day. So lots of people have time to participate. Budgets and pocketbooks, they're tight right now. And like small steps, cheap ideas are easier to implement. And that makes failure just a part of the learning process and not a huge risk. String lights in the trees downtown or in front of your store, that makes it safer to be out at night. Wildflowers in empty lots make the block more attractive. Painted crosswalks make everyone smile and use the leftover paint to paint rocks and put around town for kids to find. You'll learn lots of easy and cheap ways to begin placemaking. This course will share stories from other communities around the world, and you'll learn ideas you can incorporate into your community and hear about resources that can help you do so. I look forward to meeting you. Class number 13 and 14 is Jeff Schroeder. Uh, Schrader, I'm sorry, he says it's Schrader. Um, he had originally planned to be here today, but he's going to be teaching what in the world. So the class number 13 is in person, class number 14 is online. That will be four weeks starting on Tuesday, September the 12th through October the 3rd. And just know that class number 19 will be an online session only. And it is from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Hi everybody, I am Dr. Jennifer Rogers and I'm teaching course 15, which is Singing Whole Body for a Whole Life. It's just a one-time class on Tuesday, October 10th and uh, from 9 to 10.30 a.m. It's designed to be in person, but uh, we might be able to offer an observational Zoom if, uh, if there's enough interest in that. Um, I want you to know that I have a long passion for helping people understand their singing voice helping them to keep singing through changes in their lives and bringing adults back to singing if they have been away. I believe that everybody is a singer and that singing is a lifelong way to express ourselves on our own or together. In this one session course, we will take an interactive singing tour of your vocal instrument, including breathing techniques, body energy and posture, how the vocal mechanism works, and how you can make so many different singing sounds healthily and effectively. I hope that you'll walk away with a host of information and renewed curiosity about your own voice and your singing body. You'll be inspired to sing more, more in your life, and I hope you'll have some activities that you can do to keep your voice in shape. You don't need to bring anything with you to this session. We singers are the most portable musicians around. Perhaps clothes that you are comfortable moving in, although everything that we do, you can do standing or sitting. And I want you to know that uh, whether you consider yourself a, a singer or not, the very best therapy for aging voices is to use them. And there's no better way to do that than by singing. Singing tones your muscles, both in your throat and all the way through the core of your body. It asks you to engage your balance and your whole body. It keeps your energy moving and it keeps the strength and inflection in your speaking voice as well as in your singing voice. So I hope that you'll come out and join us. Ron, you're muted. Okay. Start over. Hello, my name is Ron Palumbo, and I will be offering class number 16, an in-person session entitled, Why We Sleep. Have you ever wondered why we need to spend one third of our lives in a state of unconsciousness? Well, then this single session PowerPoint presentation might be what you're looking for. We will begin with a quick survey of the four explanations of our need for sleep the inactivity theory, the energy conservation theory, the restorative theory, and the brain plasticity theory. Next, we will examine the seven health benefits of sleep, muscle repair, increased readiness for physical activity, maintaining a healthy weight, maintaining immunity, helping with focus and mood, 
aid in managing stress, and promoting a longer lifespan. After that, we will turn to the science of sleep. That is how sleep actually works to provide us with those health benefits. We will explore the body's sleep controls, the four stages of the sleep cycle, sleep changes across the lifespan, and the effects of sleep deprivation. So if it sounds like this class might answer some of your questions about sleep, consider joining me uh, on Tuesday, October 24th uh, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. for this single session class. Thank you for your time and attention. Sorry, a little segue here. This is Ron Palumbo again. I will also be offering class number 17, an in-person offering entitled, Why We Dream. Have you ever wondered about the function of dreams in your daily life? Then this single session PowerPoint presentation might be what you're looking for. We will begin with the three most popular explanations of dreaming. The belief in many ancient cultures that this was a state in which we could make contact with spiritual forces. Sigmund Freud's view that dreams were, in his words, the royal road to the unconscious, and the 20th century research discoveries of modern neuroscience. Next, we will explore the scientific evidence for the benefits of dreaming, which includes improved memory, problem-solving ability, and creativity, as well as what has been dubbed overnight therapy. Finally, we will touch on the phenomenon of lucid dreaming and then close by considering 11 curious facts about dreams. If it sounds like this class might answer some of your questions about the nature of dreams, consider joining me from 9 to 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, Tuesday, October 31st. Thank you for your time and attention. Class number um, 18, Writing That Scary Thing. Mary Lou Nosco will be teaching that, and she's not available to be with us today. That is going to be for four weeks on Tuesdays, beginning September the 12th through October the 3rd, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., and that will be online with Zoom. Hi, I'm Michael Ching, and over I'm doing course 19, and over three weeks, from September 26th through October 10th, I am proposing to do a songwriting workshop with you all. And you don't have to have any previous experience at this. You don't have to be a professional musician. You just have to want to participate. And I've done this before in with teachers, with elementary school students and high school students. I've even done it a couple times in a correctional center. So trust me, you guys are going to have no problem doing this. And I am never done an Ollie course before, but um, I'd love for you to join me. And I think it will be a fun time. And my proposal also, uh, it, we should have time to perform and record this song as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if John is here for class number 20, the Iowa Freedom Rock. So uh, let me tell you a little about that. So John is going to be doing the Iowa Freedom Rock Tour, and that is going to be a one session on October the 10th from 11 to 1230, and that will be in person, and it will be held at the Vintage Cooperative, uh, retire, or Vintage, Co Vintage Cooperative Living Community. And my name is Carol Rudy. I'm from the Museum of Russian Art here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I am its outreach education coordinator, which means I have the privilege of putting together presentations on Russian art and culture. And have in the 20 years that I've been volunteering at the museum, uh, made Russia and its empire and the Soviet Union as well, part of my research interest. I have also, uh, before COVID, had the privilege of leading five groups to visit Russia. 
And those visits will form the backdrop of course number 21, which I'm leading on, uh, on a Russian travelogue. It's a one week session uh, online uh, from at nine o'clock, beginning at nine o'clock on Tuesday, uh, October 17. So obviously COVID stopped our capability to actually travel to the Russian Federation and to experience in person what the Russian culture is really like if you look below its, its political uh, exterior. And now that we are engaged, where we see engaging uh, in that area, a war that will likely make it impossible for those of us who would like to travel there and see it for ourselves, a travel log is about the best way I think that we have to experience what is a really great and wonderful culture. And so my purpose in this travel log is to take you on an armchair experience through some of the cultural highlights of Russia itself. The places that we're going to travel to will be starting in Moscow, which really is a comparatively young town when you consider the historic nature of the rest of, of uh, that part of the world. Uh, built around a Kremlin or a fort that was initially made to control the trade on the river and then later grew to be the Moscow that we know today. After we experience Moscow, we'll take a circle trip to the much, much older towns, much more historic towns that surround uh, Moscow in that northern portion of, of, of Russia. And we'll see some ancient cities, but even more some ancient villages that once were power sources in that northern part of Russia. Then we'll hop on a boat and we will take the canal, river, and lake method of getting to St. Petersburg. And while we are on that boat voyage, we will really experience the back country, the small, small towns that still live traditional Russian lives and where Russian culture uh, at its uh, homiest is still very much in evidence. And then we will end up, of course, in St. Petersburg, which is Peter the Great's window to the West developed with grandeur of empire in mind uh, during the times when the czar was truly the richest ruler in all the world. And so we'll be able to see uh, evidences of that as well. Now, I know that some of you have perhaps been to Russia uh, when it was possible to go. And so hopefully this particular overview will uh, remind you of your own trip and some of the wonderful things that you saw while you were there. But for others of us, the likelihood that we will get to Russia in the near future is of course very dim. And so this opportunity will give those of, those of you a chance to see a world that is no longer very accessible to most of us. So I invite you to join me on this virtual trip and thank you in advance for coming on board. Okay, class number 22, Football Basics, A Rookie Road 2.0 is gonna be with Ron McFarland who couldn't be here today. It will be a one week session on Tuesday, October the 31st, and it will be from 11 to 12.30. And that will be in person at the Alumni Center in the Horton. The next one is class number 23, this is NAMI, Central Iowa, the Voices of Lived Experience. The instructors are going to be, um, I believe, Mackenzie Lopez, Roxanne Peterson, and Eric Gustafson. This will be a four-week session, and it will be Tuesday, September 12th through the October the 3rd from 1 to 2.30 p.m., and that will be in person at the NAMI office, which is downtown Ames. Hi, everybody. I'm Jane Cox. And this is class number 2425. It's a hybrid class. The noisy, colorful, and lively Mel Brooks. And it will be held Tuesday, October 10th at 1 o'clock to 2.30. Now, last June 28th, Mel Brooks turned 97. And what a life he has had. He was born in a small apartment, 
on the kitchen table in a borough of Brooklyn. He was the youngest of four boys and they all slept in the same bed lying crossways. And he was raised in a family where his family loved him and he loved them. Before he was five years old, he knew he had the ability to make people laugh. And he said, all I can say is that in my case, comedy was a way of keeping the joy of a happy childhood going strong. He would later say that that happy childhood only took a poor childhood, but a happy one, only took a turn for the worse when he was nine. And when people asked him what happened when he was nine, he said that was when he was first given homework. And he realized in his own words, uh-oh, the world wants something back. And he certainly gave the world something back, comedy through movies, live theater, TV, recordings and interviews. I saw him speak in Chicago for an hour when he was 90 and he was warm, wise and wonderful. So the one thing he hasn't been is quiet. The title of this course comes from a Mel Brooks quote. If you are quiet, you're not living. You gotta be noisy and colorful and lively. And so I hope you'll join me for the world of Mel Books, the noisy, colorful, and lively world he inhabited. And then for something completely different, <laughs> I'm teaching course 26 and 27, and that's a hybrid course as well. And that is Iowa in the Civil War. And that will be held two weeks, Tuesday, October 24th, and 31st from 1 to 2.30. Now in 1838, Iowa became a territory and eight years later it became a free state. And written in its constitution was the sentence, there shall be no slavery in this state. The census of 1860 showed the number of men in Iowa of military age was 116,000. And when the Civil War broke out, almost 60% of those men of military age enlisted. And one out of six would not return. Now, my great-great-grandfather came to Iowa in 1856, 10 years after statehood. And when the war broke out, he enlisted along with thousands of others. There never had to be a draft in Iowa during the Civil War because whatever the quotas were, they were met through volunteers alone. My great, great grandfather died of disease in the Civil War. And this is the Bible that he carried with him during those two years of battle. He left behind his wife and a young daughter of five years old who was my great grandmother. In this class, we will cover what led us led us to that almost inevitable war. Iowa's role through all those decades, and we'll see the war through the eyes of a few of the men from Iowa, all of whom were committed to Union victory. I hope you will in, uh, in, come and join me for this class in Iowa and the Civil War. Thank you. Hello, I'm Colleen Schwartz, and I am teaching a hybrid class, uh, about 28-29. It's a two-week course is on September 12th, and then a break of a week, and then September 26th. The title is Fall Prevention in the Fall. In the spirit of our personal wellness and our growth and our understanding of public health, um, and really our continued health curiosity, I invite you to join me to get the latest in fall prevention resources. Um, so in the two session class, we'll be spending half of it going over research and statistics and data, which I know I love and I, a lot of you do too, but the other half will be really focused on, on you and uh, what you can do as um, exercise and balance, uh, balance testing um, to prevent falls uh, in, in your life. And, um, so join me 
I'm a podiatrist, public health educator, and uh, more specifically, we'll go over some of the resources such as uh, what the National Council on Aging for Fall Prevention, um, their White House uh, summits and conferences have covered. Um, looking back to 2015, um, I really want to share with you and with, we can as a group look at what have we done, uh, have we achieved the, the goals from 2015 as a nation? Um, also, the CDC uh, study. Oh. Pro sorry, oh. Are you, sorry. The study program, which is stopping elderly accidents, deaths, and injuries. Um, but even you know, most fun and useful for us all. We'll learn, as I said before, exercises um, and also the testing parameters, so you know what your doctors are looking for um, when they are testing or where you kind of stack up. Um, and so we'll be doing like a gait speed walk, a sit to stand and that type of thing. Um, speaking from personal, the other thing I wanna go over too is what's available and when should you use a cane? Or if you want to go and on vacation or on a cruise or you're gonna have to wait in line, what, what, what devices are available? Um, I've spent a lot of time being uh, cane dependent myself. And so I look forward to answering questions, sharing my experience and being with you all. So thank you so much. I look forward to uh, seeing you all next month. And let's hope that the only thing falling this fall are leaves, not us. <laughs> this is Sam Wormley. I'm going to be teaching class number 30 is online only, photography tips and techniques. It's a six weeks course. Uh, on Tuesdays, September 26th through October 31, meeting at 3 to 4.30 in the afternoon. Creating a photographic image, perhaps to share an event in your lives or make a statement expressing your ideas or values or creating art. The basic principles of photography are the same, whether you're using an old brownie film camera thousand dollars worth of DSLR cameras with telephoto lenses and tripods and perhaps even lighting equipment, or the excellent cameras of our smartphones. In fact, most of these days, people do photography with their iPhones and their Androids. No matter what you use, this course is designed to help you achieve your photographic goals and improve your photography. We will address what you want to learn, and additionally, we will cover cell phone camera basics, DSLR camera basics if warranted, composition, lighting, post-image processing, backup, sharing, and printing, and finally, challenging yourself. Thank you. Class number 31, Indian flatbreads, is a cooking class, and we haven't been able to do cooking classes for a while, so we're super excited by this. Rama is out of town. This will be a one session class on Tuesday, October the 24th from 3 to 5 p.m. So come with an appetite because you, of course you will get to have some snacks with that. Hi, I'm Valerie Stahlbomber and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. I'm teaching course number 32, Introduction to Acupuncture as a Healthcare Option. What I do is help people understand more about their health issues as well as I use a variety of techniques and lifestyle advice to help remedy those health problems. Most people don't understand much about acupuncture. They think it's just used for pain, but actually it's an entire healthcare option, a holistic approach to how to look at health problems and what you can do, not just what I can do. So there is a lot that I can help you learn just by being in this class. You will learn about the variety of health problems that I work on. I'll discuss some case examples so that you can see if this is an effective healthcare option, a kind of logic that can uh, remedy some of your health problems. The course is offered two nights, Tuesdays, October 3rd and 10th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. It will be online and in person at the Iowa State Alumni Center. Most people think acupuncture is only used for pain relief but this is a healthcare practice that is complete and can use for just about any kind of health problem. I've been working full-time as a health provider for 26 years. I'm an employee of Story County Medical Center, our county hospital here in, um, in Iowa. 
My clinic is in Ames, Iowa. Acupuncture can help with all kinds of pain. So whether it's back pain, knee pains, headache, plantar fasciitis, hands, fingers, forearms, elbows, neck pain. I work on all kinds of pain, but also insomnia, fatigue, indigestion, GERD, infertility, um, mental health, memory problems, post-traumatic stress, post-stroke recovery, just about anything I have worked on in these 26 years. There'll be some handouts. And uh, again, these will be available online as well as in person. And you'll have more uh, details about how you can understand your health. One of the handouts is a checklist that you'll go through and you'll see the logic for how I figure out how to help solve problems. I'm in this healthcare because I had a problem that wasn't helped and I was basically disabled. I couldn't even leave my house. So you'll see there's a different logic to understanding why somebody has the problem. So not only what I can do for you as a provider, but also what you can do. And that's how I got healthy. We'll go over a set of stretches. In other words, something very simple that you can do at home, it takes five to 10 minutes. I learned these when I got healthy and it makes all the difference in your day. You'll have more energy and you'll have less pain. I can guarantee that. So if you're interested in learning more about what you can do to uh, improve your health, not just live with your aches and pains and your other problems, you might wanna sit in on this course. Again, it's Tuesdays, October 3rd and 10th from 5.30 to 7, live and in person at the Iowa State Alumni Association. And as, a vet, as an extra incentive, anyone who takes this course and wants to contact me, I'll give you a free 15 minute consultation over the phone and help you understand more what you can do or what I could do for you. Thank you. Hello, Welcome Mike. To class 34, Science yeah. News. I'm Hello, one Mike. of your hosts, Mike Metz, and Sam's trying to talk over me. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is the other host of this program. So how are you doing, Sam? Well, I just wanted to clarify, we're teaching science in the news. It's six weeks starting the sep uh, starting September 13th, and it's at nine in the morning when people are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Oh, uh, the bright-eyed part is okay, but the bushy-tailed, I don't know. Um, <laughs> as an example of some of the things we will cover in the news, usually within that week, uh, a lot of times we'll send our folks who are participating uh, a number of... Uh, articles that have to do with things that have been in the news recently. And then we'll uh, pick one or two of those and discuss. Or if you have something you want to talk about, we'll gladly try to go down that rabbit hole of science. But <laughs> as I started to say, one of those things that are currently in the news, and Sam helped me clarify this, but the Perseids meteor shower will be at its maximum this Saturday night. And the really neat thing about it is the moon is in its waning gibbous form. And so the sky will be magnificent to see these. Right. People should look uh, sometime between 11 p.m. and 3 in the morning. That's the best time. And not only Saturday night, but tonight, I mean, Friday night and Saturday night and Sunday night are all good nights to look at the Pe Perseid meteors. Now, Sam, I'm not too swift, and I sometimes play Tuttle tur Turtle in our science show. Any anyway, this uh, comet that actually causes this phenomenon is called a Swift Tuttle Comet. And I wonder if you could explain why we see this annually. When the Swift Tuttle Comet comes in close to the sun, it outgasses and leaves pebble, pebbles and sand and all kinds of little pieces of debris in its orbit. And then when the Earth tends to plow through that orbit, those little pieces come into our atmosphere at great speed and basically create a, a fireball or a streak where they're so hot, they're ionizing the air. And that's what we see as meteors in the atmosphere. So that's an example of the kind of fun and uh, we'll interrupt each other and laugh and uh, well, one of the things we need to tell people, Mike, is that we're not experts, but we try to help each other. That's and right. All, everybody in the class understand the interesting science that's in the news. And if we have questions that go unanswered, either there's no answer or we will look it up and try to bring 
some kind of satisfaction to the participants. So right. thank you again. That's class 34. It's six weeks, 9 to 1030 a.m. starting September 13th. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sam. Hi, my name is Ron Palumbo, and I'll be offering class number 35 entitled Our Aging Brains. Some good news and a few tips. Until the mid-70s, the disorders of aging were lumped together as senility. And senility was viewed as untreatable because the brain does not grow new cells and thus cannot repair itself. But research over the past 40 years has revealed that our brains have a capacity dubbed neuroplasticity. This means that some portions of our brain can rewire themselves in order to take over functions lost due to illness or injury. In this in-person two-session PowerPoint presentation, uh, I will first outline brain development across the lifespan to give us some context. Next, we will take a look at the three signs of cognitive aging. Then we will turn to the discovery of neuroplasticity and how we can build what has come to be known as cognitive reserve. That is a protective capacity of thinking abilities. Our second session will introduce the scaffolding theory of aging and cognition and present three steps for developing your own cognitive reserve. Those steps are exercising regularly, getting a good night's sleep, and maintaining a healthy diet. If it sounds like this information might be useful to you, join me for this class to be offered on consecutive Wednesdays, October 25th and November 1st, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm Jorgen Rasmussen, and I am Distinguished Professor Emeritus here at Iowa State University in Political Science. Uh, I am going to be offering course 35 and 36. As a course moves from being a proposal to the actual presentation, there tends to be a certain amount of shifting of content. And I think a more accurate title of what I'm going to be doing now would be the existential perils of the Republic. So that's a little bit more dramatic, but it also is a little bit more accurate. The class meets on Wednesdays from 11 to 12.30, and the first class meeting is on the 13th of September. The reason that I'm presenting this course is that we live in dangerous times. Less than two years ago, one man, a single individual, prevented this country from having a coup. We came that close in the United States of America to having a coup, a illegal seizure of power. And I fully believe that within the next two years, there will be another attempt at a coup. And who knows whether that will be successful or not. So this seemed to me to be a great time to look at the history of this country when we had had other crises. What were they about? How did we deal with them? And let me give you a couple of examples of ones we'll be looking at. The election of the president in the year 1800. The House of Representatives had to vote 36 times before we got a president elected in that election. And we came this close to electing as president of the United States, Aaron Burr, the man who killed Alexander Hamilton. Let me give you another one that we'll be looking at, the presidential election of 1876 and poor Sam Tilden. Sam Tilden was one electoral vote away from being elected president, one vote. There were three states that had not yet declared and they had a total of 30 votes and Alexander and Sam, excuse me, Sam Tilden needed just one. Sam goes to bed figuring that when he gets up the next morning, he will be president. 
he gets up the next morning and he finds that all of the 30 votes that were outstanding have been given to the other guy and he's got nothing. You talk about a stolen election. And what do you think that Sam Tilden did? If you want to know, you got to take the course. We don't give you something for nothing here. <laughs> and so the point is that if you, like me, like to be viewing with alarm, if that's good for your day, then I say this is absolutely the course for you. Come on Wednesday morning and be alarmed. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I can pack, get past that one. There's a <laughs> <Jordan. laughs> Can't top it. So class number 38 and 39 is patient advocacy. And Pamela and Jacob Sigmund were not able to be here today. That's a one-week session on Wednesday, October the 11th from 11 to 1230. That will be offered in person and online. The next course, number 40 and 41, which is the Lotus Flower lan Lantern Craft, um, that instructor is not also able to be with us. It is one session on Wednesday, November the 1st from 11 to 12.30. This is something a little different than we've done in the past. The instructor will be all online. Some of you will be online and some of you will be in the building. And we will have packets of material that the instructor will send for you to put together on, under her guidance. So ready for the next class. Okay, and the next class is number 42 and 43, Iowa Emergency Management and You. Melissa Spencer will be presenting this class. She's unable to be with us today. Uh, so if you are interested in learning what the Iowa Emergency Management process is in Iowa, please join us on Wednesday, September 13th at 1 o'clock. And that will be in the building at the Alumni Center and online. And my name is Tisa Johnson, and I am teaching class 44 and 45, which is an online course um, entitled Downsizing 101 for Seniors. Um, it is not alarming in the same way that political strife is, but many people find um, looking at a lifetime you know, worth of accumulation and memories um, to be a quite a daunting process. And so in our course, we talk um, about some philosophical approaches to that, and then also lots and lots of practical tips and strategies for dealing with stuff and things. Um, it sounds, um, you know, like I said, it's an overwhelming process, but our course is designed to um, leave a person feeling less overwhelmed and more empowered um, as a result of intent of attending. And um, I would say that we um, that's an easy course to teach because even if you are not undergoing this process for yourself at this time, um, everyone in the course has lived experience around it. And so there is a lot of sharing of resources and ideas and we would love to have you. Oh, it is so Wednesday, September 20th from one to 2.30 on Zoom. Thanks. Thank you, Tisa. The next class is with Ellen Hikins. She's not able to be with us today. It is class number 46 and 47, over-the-counter medications and older adults. This will be presented as a hybrid, and it will be Wednesday, September 27th at 1 p.m. And Diana? You're muted, Diana. Well, we'll try this again. Um, it's hard to cut me off. <laughs> um, Theodore Geisel and the world of Dr. Seuss. Um, lots of people know about the writings and the books of Dr. Seuss, but a lot of people don't know anything about the man who wrote all of those books, whose name was Theodore Geisel. And his middle name is Zeus, and that's where that came from. But you're going to get a lot of interesting facts about his background, 
what he did during the Second World War that had a great effect on his books. Um, a little more about his first book, which was a little bit bawdy. Um, above the first book for children, which was the cat in the hat, and it's something he did on a dare. Um, what about the Lorax? Do you all know the Lorax? What's the story behind his writing of the Lorax? And we'll look at those things. We'll also look at his art and we'll look at the, the sculpture that he did and the painting that he did. He was a very broadly um, educated person and he, he did all, work in all kinds of the all numbers of the art fields. And so he truly is an interesting man and we'll um, probably take a stab at creating our own short Dr. Zeus um, writing. So all kinds of things. The class is being offered from 1 to 2.30 on Wednesday and it begins on October the 11th and it runs through November the 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. The next three classes are all being offered in person at Vintage Cooperative of Ames. The first one is class number 50, Vegetable Salads, and that will be on Wednesday, September 13th from 3 to 5 p.m. The next class is number 51, Fruit Salads, which will be on Wednesday, September 20th from 3 to 5 p.m. And class number 52, Main Dish Salads, will be offered on Wednesday, September 27th from 3 to 5 p.m. And again, all three of those are offered at Vintage Cooperative of Inks. My name is Jane Beatty, and I will be offering, uh, of course, called Watercolor uh, Workshop. And uh, it will be offered on September 13th and September 27th. These are two Wednesdays from three o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock in the afternoon. And th this is a workshop for people who are already working in watercolor. So um, it's important to bring your own paint and paper and uh, equipment to the class. Um, I will begin each class uh, with a demonstration of uh, various techniques and strategies for painting in watercolor. And uh, each student will plan paintings and uh, use these techniques as they see uh, needed. Um, at the end of the second class, uh, we will have a, an opportunity for each person to show the work that, that they are doing and what their plans uh, for their work are to be. So I hope to see you there. Thank you. My name is Karen Bates. I'll be teaching course number 54, which is entitled Qigong, a mind, body, and spirit practice. It's going to be four weeks, beginning September 13th and ending October 4th. It will be from 3 to 4.30, and the location will be at Green Hills. This is an in-person class only. Qigong, which is spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G, -G, means the cultivation of qi, and qi loosely translated means energy. Traditional Chinese medicine believes there are two main reasons for ill health. One, the lack of qi, and two, qi that has been blocked or is stagnant. So when we do Qigong, we're garnering more chi, but we're also unblocking chi. Qigong was developed in China about 2,500 years ago, the same time as yoga was in India. Qigong is the mother of the more familiar Tai Chi that came about a thousand years later. Qigong involves four things, movements, breathing, self-applied massage and meditation, which we will do in every class. 
Many of the movements mirror nature, such as a river flowing or clouds floating, and will also do what's known as the animal frolics. Some of the benefits are relief of pain, reduction of stress, strengthening the immune system, improved balance. Uh, there's many of them. I call it a moving meditation. The class can be done all standing, all seated, or most people do a combination of seated and standing. You will receive written directions and some videos on many of the movements so that you can practice at home. You will feel so relaxed that I would advise against making any major decisions or signing any legal documents for 24 hours after each class. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. This is Sam Wormley. I'm teaching uh, course number 55. It's online only, Learning Mac Computers. It's eight weeks long on Thursday mornings uh, from 9 to 10.30, September 14th through the 2nd of November. Some of us are brand new to the Mac computers and some of us are seasoned users. We're moving into the future together and so are the Macs they're becoming more capable every year. Therefore, it is always good to review basic function and the new features of our Macs that help us enjoy safe, secure, and hassle-free computing and our connections via the internet. We talk about hardware, software, applications, security, maintenance, and there's an emphasis on safe practices and syncing with your other Apple devices. This is a very interactive course based on what you want to know. Additionally, I will address these topics. Navigating the Mac, making life easier, contacts and connections, word processing, privacy, security, and maintenance, backup, storage, and sharing, and solving problems and getting answers. Thank you. Well, this is... Uh... V.V. Brahman, I will be giving course uh, number 56. It's no secret that we are living at a time when we are submerged in negative, depressing, and often unpleasant news that makes our otherwise nice looking faces gloomy and glum. It would be good to bring out a smile or two, some hearty laughter it would be even better. This, as we know, can be accomplished either by some silly jokes or some good humor, more to our satisfaction than the words and actions of some of our current politicians. The goal of this course is to accomplish just that. The course may sound like a laughing matter, but it is more than that. It will analyze and categorize the variety of matters that provoke light-hearted laughter in our lives. The course, I believe, will start on September 14th until October 5th. And, uh, it's a four-week course. The time is Thursdays uh, uh, from, at, I think, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. I hope to see you all and uh, with some cheer. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilona Matysiak. Uh, I am a sociologist from Poland uh, and a visiting scholar at ISU. Uh, my course number is 57 uh, and its title is uh, Aging in Place in Rural Iowa. Uh, it is an online course uh, which will take place on September 21st and September 28th, Thursdays uh, between uh, 1 and 2.30 p.m. Uh, if you are interested or concerned about the aging population in small Iowa towns, uh, this course is for you. 
Uh, we will focus on what older adults need uh, to be able to age in place in the rural communities while maintaining a good quality of life and how to facilitate that. We'll discuss innovative solutions regarding, for example, uh, medical services, in-home care, as well as entertainment and recreation opportunities. We will also reflect on challenges related to a massive transition of the baby boomer generation into retirement in the context of rural Iowa. Uh, our discussions will be based on research I conducted last year through ISU and course participants will be strongly encouraged to share their own thoughts uh, and experiences. Uh, I hope to provide participants with some inspiration for practical solutions of how to deal with aging in rural Iowa communities. And for me, the possibility to discuss uh, and verify uh, what I found will be extremely beneficial not only in terms of interpretation of the data that I have already collected, but also my future research uh, on rural aging. This is an ongoing project, uh, which I hope to continue with my ISU colleagues and possibly add comparisons with other US states as well as European countries. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for the opportunity to present my course uh, in a more detailed way. Uh, I hope that you will find it interesting and Looking forward to seeing you in September. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Witt, and I'll present, be presenting course number 58, Energy in the United States. Where does it come from and where does it go? The course will be offered in online format on Thursday, October 5th, from 1 to 2.30 p.m. All of us use energy every day. Energy is part of everything we do, everything we use, everything we touch each day. But most of us only think about the energy, about energy when we pay our utility bill or put fuel in our cars. In fact, our individual energy requirements are much, much more than that. Today, energy is a prominent topic in the media, especially as it relates to climate change and renewable energy. However, the media doesn't present an overall picture of our energy needs and the challenges that we face today. I'll first give you some background on the different types of energy we use as individuals today and compare the energy content and the cost of that type of energy. We'll then look at all the sources of energy in the United States and how much of that energy goes to producing electricity. We'll also look at the energy requirements or energy use of the four main energy sectors in the country, residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors. And we'll, use, we'll learn where the energy in the United States is used and how efficiently we use it in, in, in these sectors. We'll also spend a little time looking at energy in Iowa and how it compares to the overall energy and use in the United States. And after this session, you should have a greater appreciation of the role energy plays in our lives and hopefully a better perspective on the challenges that face us. Thanks for your interest in this topic. Hello, I'm Charles Knicker, the instructor for OLLI class number 59. This one is about the facts of life, but the facts of life that relate to our democracy, our families and our schools today. I know we've all heard the lines uh, that uh, those people won't listen to facts or truth is now negotiable. Well, if that's the attitude we take and just say we want to stay in our own bubble or tribe, uh, I think I, uh, you should hear and agree with uh, Yale professor Timothy Snyder's view that to abandon facts is to abandon freedom. He says if if we don't say, if, uh, if we say nothing is true, then how can we really criticize power? In some sense, to me, it's similar to what Thomas Jefferson said many years before. The nation that expects to be ignorant and free expects what never was and never uh, will be. And so in uh, this course, uh, I'll use uh, Timothy Snyder's book and also a brand new book that uh, debunks uh, eight of the far right's playbook uh, assertions, such as all government is bad, science is suspect, and inequality is not so bad. And in that, we'll focus with examples on government institutions, such as the Supreme Court, 
uh, and how families are viewed and the schools are viewed by the Christian nationalism movement. So it'll be a challenge, but you want to learn some new facts of life. Thank you. And uh, by the way, it's offered uh, Thursdays, October 12th through November 2nd, uh, from 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon. That'll be in person at Green Hills. Hi, everyone. I apologize that you can't see me. Um, some camera issues today. Um, but I am presenting course 60 this fall. Uh, my name is Allison or Allie Landsman. My pronouns are she, her. I am a registered dietitian, a public health professional specializing in just nourishing and sustainable food systems change. And the course I'll be instructing is called Cultivating Nourishing Food Environments in Iowa. Um, this course will span uh, three lessons from Thursday, September 14th to October 5th with no class on September 28th. Um, the times will be from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it will be it will take place on online. In this course, we'll focus on the profound impact of our current food, food environment um, and what it has on our health and how this impact can be altered if we commit to cultivating a food system where di diverse foods representative of many cultures, dense in nutrients, and sustainably grown by local producers are the norm. We'll learn about nourishing food environments through systems thinking and utilize systems visioning and systems action to conceive how we can transform our food systems in Iowa or wherever you may reside and our role in this process to benefit current and future personal, public, and planetary health. Thank you, and I'm hoping to see several of you there. This is Bennett Smith, and I am teaching course number 61, the Lincoln-Douglas Debates of 1858. That is going to be on Thursday, October 12th, from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. And really looking forward to doing this. Um, of course, the Lincoln-Douglas Debates are very famous, seven debates between Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas over the principal topic of slavery, uh, more specifically the extension of slavery into the territories. Douglas, of course, had gotten through the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. And so it's a really interesting series of debates we'll take a look at. Um, Lincoln pretty much exceeds expectations in these debates. And then the fact that they got published is gonna catapult him into a position where he could win the nomination of the new Republican Party. So I hope you will join me for uh, this lecture and thank you very much for your time. I'm going to speak uh, about Holly course number 62, Civil Conversations About Common Good Issues for Democracy. Uh, last year, Vivi Raman and I team taught the course and I'm speaking for both of us here. Uh, this year, it will be uh, on Fridays, four Fridays in person at Green Hills from October 13th to November th uh, 3rd, from 9 to 1030 in the morning. Now, interesting, last year, uh, many of the class members uh, who asked, uh, and they encouraged us to teach it again, they admitted they were more concerned about how do you hold civil conversations with families and friends rather than political opponents or uh, members of the other party. Uh, we learned some things. And so in the four sessions that we're doing this year, we're going to start in the earlier sessions with focusing more on knowing who really we are and how we operate and being introduced to each other. But then we are going to move uh, in ne the next sessions to learning, practicing skills on how to re truly listen and also how to ask constructive questions. Now we are building this course on a model that was developed at the University of Vermont. And it requires, as they said, three virtues, that's their word. It, to have a civil conversation, you need to have humility, you need to respect others and actually have generosity. And by that, that means that you acknowledge maybe you can work 
you won't agree with everybody on everything, but you can find something to work on. And we do believe that this will result in improving the common good. So again, it's a delightful interactive program. Thank you. I'm Jim Patton, and uh, <clears throat> I'm conducting two of the only two field trips that we'll do this fall. When I say field trips, uh, partial, partial day trips. Uh, the first one is number 63, the Bayer Crop Science Learning Center at Huxley. Uh, we were visiting there probably five or six years ago, and we'll be returning there. Uh, we're going to have class members drive themselves there. The classes are on Friday. The, the class is on Friday from three to five. Go down Interstate 35 to the Huxley exit. It's right there when you get off the exit. The uh, visit will primarily include some really informative displays that are in the learning center, together with some field plots right outside the learning center. And uh, this is called the Bayer Crop Science Learning Center. And Bayer has, uh, over a period of time, merged several companies together and are leading uh, the field or one of the leaders in the field of uh, crop science and seed, uh, seed science. Uh, this particular visit is uh, going to depend some on weather. So those who enroll, I will be in touch with you so you know exactly whether we're going, if we're gonna be late or early, but typically we try to do these at the end of the year from three to five. And uh, so I certainly do wanna have everybody's email and phone number that we can uh, keep you up to date as we come to September 15th for the Bayer Crop Science Learning Center from three to five, uh, just down the interstate. So I'll go right on into uh, class number 64. This is one that uh, we've been looking forward to doing. Uh, Gerilyn, do we have anybody from there speaking about it? I will certainly give everybody an update, okay. Uh, many of you have noticed a new facility being built on the south edge of Highway 30 called the Kent Feed Mill. Uh, this is one of the new uh, research and, and research and facilities that Iowa State's adding to their uh, animal science curriculum. They'll be teaching students there, they'll be doing research there, and they're gonna be doing demonstrations there. And you might say, well, why do we care about a feed mill? Well, one of the things is many of our, much of our livestock and poultry research is done with small quantities of feed. And so this facility is gonna be able to handle those things. We're gonna be able to teach students to have one of, the, one of the skills they walk away from Iowa State with is how to uh, operate and manage a feed mill because we know we have lots of them. And Iowa being one of the livestock leaders in the, in the US, uh, one of the things we experienced in, in arranging this is there's a lot of international visitors coming to see this feed mill, which will hopefully be open around the first or middle part of September. And uh, it's gonna be designed as much for underclassmen and graduate students uh, as it is for actually mixing feed for the livestock uh, research farms. So it's a very interesting combination. And I would comment at this point that both the Bayer Crop Science Learning Center field trip and the Kent feed mill uh, field trip are going to be limited to about 15 students. So if you think you're interested, get signed up right away on those. And uh, I think we'll have a good time. We'll be actually meeting at the feed mill. So again, we'll be having our own transportation to the feed mill. And that one's on November 3rd from three to five in the afternoon, scheduling both of these field trips late afternoon. So hopefully it minimizes any conflicts with people wanting to take other courses. And those will both be on site. I wonder if I should make a comment on our member-only lecture that I've been working with. Is that okay, Geraldine? That'd be great. Um, we've got a very, we've got a number of very interesting member-only lectures. The one that I've been particularly interested in is on November second, and it's called Digital Agriculture. Many of you are aware that not only in our own lives, but particularly in industry and in agriculture, uh, the internet and all the things we do are changing rapidly. Uh, the speaker for this particular member-only lecture will be Matt Dar. Uh, Matt is considered one of the top researchers on campus, not just in the Ag College, but the whole campus. Uh, his research is on uh, uh, using technology. He works closely not only with 
undergrads and grads on campus, but also with some of the uh, industries that we have all around us dealing with agriculture. He does a lot of his work out at the BioCentury Farm, and I'm sure he'll tell us a little bit about that when he gives his report. Uh, he, I think one of the interesting things about Matt's work is that he is known by people around the university, but also around the world. And uh, one of the things that's gonna be interesting also is, although he speaks on November 2nd, the following year, We'll have, we'll be hosting the Farm Progress Show here again between Ames and Boone. And a lot of the technology that he talks about will be introduced during that Farm Progress Show. So the member only lecture, and of course this is open to everyone, will be on Thursday, November 2nd, and that'll be from three to 4.30. Matt will be at the Horton uh, classroom, but it'll also be, it's a hybrid class so that people from home or uh, I think probably even recorded uh, can catch the information later. But uh, Matt Dar presenting November 2nd from 3 to 4.30 on digital agriculture. So I encourage everybody to consider that on their calendar. Thank you. This is Bennett Smith again. Uh, course number 65 is a day trip to the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library and Museum down in West Branch. Maybe some of you have been down there on a former trip with us. I've never been there, so uh, I proposed uh, that we go again, and Gerilyn took me up on that. So that'll be Thursday, September 7th here. So coming up fairly quick from 7.30 to 5.30. So just a one-day event. Um, of course, Hoover is really interesting. Most people just recall his time as president of the United States and some of the mistakes that were made in the early part of the Great Depression. What most people don't know is that Herbert Hoover is by many accounts, the greatest humanitarian that's ever lived and his uh, contributions and career prior to that. Also had a somewhat productive post-presidency. So we'll uh, look forward to uh, going on that trip and uh, talking a little more about Herbert Hoover. Thank you. And Camille, are you there? Yeah, thank you. So um, I appreciate that that we got that little introduction by James just a, a minute ago. I'm sorry I had to hop off this to get on another meeting for the feed mill. But my name is Camille Schroeder, and I serve as the business and programs manager for the new Iowa State University Kent Feed Mill and Grain Science Complex. And we are looking forward to offering that tour to uh, those who take part. And um, we're a brand new facility on South State Avenue. So hopefully you have seen that as you're coming uh, through Ames or by Ames. Um, and we look forward to showing you around. So this is um, a large complex that is completely privately funded and we will have lots of students on site. Uh, it's 47,000 square foot. We're not gonna make you all walk all of that, but we will definitely, uh, show you around to some interesting spaces. We have a feed mill, a pilot facility, an analytical lab, a classroom, and we are the most unique facility of its kind in the world for student learning and research and education because we not only have all of that, we have a full, fully functioning uh, grain storage and drying facility there as well. So that doesn't exist uh, anywhere else in the world. So this facility is really um, something that we're very proud of, and we hope that you will come out and visit with myself, our director, Dr. Dirk Meyer, our associate director, Tony Ewing, and visit us. So thank you. Because we had a couple people talk about one of the trips, and then we had some uh, conversations about a members only lecture, I just want to also let you know, uh, first of all, the, the Herbert Hoover, um, try to get registered by the um, August the 21st, because that trip is really coming up. And uh, the trip after that, the day trip will be Waterloo Museums Tour, that's number 66. And that is on Friday, September the 29th. And we'd hope you'd have you register for that by September the 11th. And this is definitely museums. So we're going to go to the John Deere Tractor and Engine Museum, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Dan Gable Museum, and the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum and the Grout Museum of History and Science. 
Then on Friday, October the 27th, uh, from 6.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon or so, we are going to be exploring Des Moines. And I know it sounds crazy. You know, most of us live close to Des Moines, but sometimes the, the things that we're the closest to, we don't do. Um, so this will be, like I said, on October 27th. And we're going to go to the state of Iowa Capitol building, the Greater Des Moines Botanicals Gardens, and then the Des Moines Art Center. And of course, there will be lunch uh, for each of those items, each of those days. And then to go back and tell you a little bit more about some of the other members only lectures, we have four of those every fall and four in the spring and one in the winter. And Jim told you about uh, the one on November 2nd. Um, Rob Kinsey will be doing a presentation for us on Wednesday, October the 11th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. It will be um, at the Alumni Center and online also. And it's called Legacy Giving, Live Your Same Lifestyle While Increasing Your Philanthropic Impact. And he's going to just talk about different ways you can um, give and ways that um, how you can probably give to your own kids and things like that without taxes and things like that. He, he's got a lot of really great information. And then on Wednesday, October the 18th is Reflections on Culture, Ethnicity, and Universally, Universally. Universality, and that's Vivi Raman. Um, Vivi will do a great job with that. Um, it's on cultures and ethnic distinctions. And so that is on Wednesday, October the 18th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. And that is a Zoom only. And then on Wednesday, October the 25th, this one will be a hybrid. It'll be in-person and online. From 3 to 4.30 will be one, and then the number four water from polar bears to alligators and making it count. And this is uh, with Hank uh, Kohler and he's talking about his experiences paddling uh, from, the mini from Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico. And those of you who live in the Ames area may remember, um, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna, Happy Joe's Pizza. Um, Hank used to own the Happy Joe's before the water decided to yeah. not let it come back any longer. So that's just, all we've got for you right now, we can open this up to questions. Um, thank you so much for everybody for coming. Those of you who are listening to everything, thank you to all of our presenters. We appreciate your time. And so we're going to open this up. So if anybody's got anything. Carolyn, I would just like to tell people about the uh, open lecture that the um, ISU retirees are doing on October 19th on banned books. And that will be an online presentation at three o'clock in the afternoon on October 19th. And just so you all know, all OLLI members will be receiving um, an invitation to all of the ISU retirees programs. And so you will get that information um, in probably in the next newsletter. So thank you for remind, reminding me about that, Diana. Thank you. Any other questions? You yeah, can um, I was wondering if the uh, in-person lectures <clears throat> are recorded. And it depends if it's also a hybrid. Which mm -hmm. class? Oh, um, well, I was thinking of that one, uh, Why We Sleep and Why We Dream. That is strictly, those are strictly going to be in-person. Oh, okay. So they will not be recorded. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Geraldine. This is Lynn Van Valen. I did not get the, the times or the, um, the days for the fall prevention. It was number 28 and 29. I for some reason, I didn't, I didn't get that information written down. I can get that for you here in just one second. Where you can actually. Sure. Um, Colleen's class is going to be on September 12th and the 26th. From 12th, and 26th, okay. 12th and 26th from 3 to 4.30. And that's in September? Yes. 4.30. Thank you. Yep. And it can either be in person or you can do it online. Okay, good. I think I knew it was hybrid. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? That's it for me. All right. Well, I hope you all get on tomorrow morning, um, 8.30, the online registration opens. Um, hope you'll be ready to sign up for many classes. There's so many good ones. I know it's going to be a tough, tough choice, but 
I wrote down 14 that I want to take. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to do all of them, actually, um, personally, but yeah. I, I do have a question. Sure. If, um, if it's, say, a two-week session and you won't be available for one of the weeks um, uh, and it's a hybrid course, can you sign up and attend one session online um, or recorded um, and then attend the next session in person? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Just if you can just kind of let us know that after you register, you can just contact me or contact Heather and just say, okay. you know, I'm going to be at this one, but not at the next one. And then we'll know and we'll make okay. sure you get that recording. And do you know which class that is? Uh, yes, I believe it's the uh, fall prevention. And then also, I believe it's the um, downsizing for seniors. Yep. They're both be online. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lots of good questions. Anyone else? Okay. Well, if there are no further questions, once I'd like to thank you all again for coming. And I hope to see lots of registration forms going through with all your names on them. Um, Heather and I will both be in the office if you need to call us for anything. Paula, did you have I another question? Yes, I'm sorry to bother you uh, one more time. Um, what, what, uh, does one have to be a member to sign up um, or, um, or is it open to everyone? What it is, Paula, is you can pay your membership when you register for the class. Okay, you thank you. You don't have to pay the membership ahead of time. You can do it when you pay for your class. Okay, Very good question. Thank you. Very good question. I, Thanks. I have one question. Yes. Um, it, I can't remember the name of the class exactly, but he wasn't here, but it's something like what in the world or yep. where in the world or yep, something. What in the world. Yep. What, yep. what is it about? Jeff normally does current um, events in the world that's going on. Okay. And, and so he does that and he will come and it's, it's a very flowing class um, as far as, you know, he, it's, he looks at things like sometimes even that morning. Uh, usually the day before, um, if folks also have a, an area of that they want to discuss, uh, you just bring that up. And um, he's got a great experience um, from traveling and a wide variety of things. He couldn't be here today. Um, we thought we, he was going to make it, but unfortunately, something must have come up. So, Jane, I okay. want to say that if you take that course, you will not be disappointed. It's excellent. It is good. Okay. Thank you. He's been teaching that class many years now. I can't even tell you how many years. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Paula? I, I just, I just want to put a plug in for the catalog um, online because I downloaded it and studied it. it it's great. It's very clear. Um, so uh, thank you for organizing that. Well, thank you. That's nice to know. We appreciate that. You'll notice that we have classes in a wide variety of places this time. And there are some days when we have three classes going on at the same time. For example, we have a, um, a cooking class at Vintage Cooperative. We have the watercolor class going on. And then I believe there's another class that's gonna be at Green Hills at, all at the same time. So Heather and I have got it all worked out. We'll be around to take care of everybody um, and get that all done. Anything else? Hey, Jerry Lynn, this is Myrna Kotz. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, Jane Beatty, if she would, I sent her a, a personal message, if she would notice an answer. Um, Jane may not. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. What was your question? Oh, it was just, I, I, I had been thinking I would take your watercolor class, but was disappointed that it was for those already that know how. <laughs> and oh. I was wondering if you will do one that is beginner at some point. Well, I, I, I will, if there's interest, um, possibly, um, let's see, possibly in, in the spring, I think would be the earliest possibility. Okay. Uh, are you, are you not, ex have you not uh, painted in watercolor at all, or are you worried that you might not be uh, experienced enough? I would say not at all. Oh, okay. Then you you do need the first course. Okay. That's right. right. You're right. Very good, okay. Myrna. 
Thanks. Anyone else? Well, I can tell you that Heather and I are really looking forward to this session of classes. It's outstanding. The curriculum committee has done a fabulous job of putting these together. And we thank all of our instructors and all of our committee members and all and everybody else. So I think we are done for today. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me or Heather at any point in time. And we look forward to seeing your registrations come through tomorrow. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you.